I want to bring in our panel of experts to break this down. Waleed Ferris, Secretary General of the Transatlantic Parliamentary Group, Newsmax foreign policy analyst and author of the book Iran Imperialist Republic, as well as foreign policy expert Harley Lippmann. And again, we have joining with us our special guest, Thane Rosenbaum. Gentlemen, welcome, and we appreciate you being here. Well, Lita, I want to kick it off with you. Following that vote on Monday, Netanyahu appealed for unity while addressing his nation. Instead, Israeli doctors engaged in a 24-hour strike. Black ads covered newspaper front pages on Tuesday, calling it a black day for Israeli democracy. And thousands of military reservists have threatened to stop reporting for duty now that the first law has been passed. Talk to me a little bit about what has led up to this point, why this decision was made, uh, and again, the, the domino effect that this is having across the country in terms of reaction. Well, absolutely. This is new for Israel, but not that new historically. I remember 1982, back in the old days in Lebanon, I mean, when the Israelis moved in, their army moved in, they were caused by the far left at the time, not even the Labour Party, to, uh, to call, to demonstrate. And some of these demonstrations, to request the withdrawal of the Israeli forces, reached 400,000. That's in 1982. And then, of course, there were boycotts. There were a lot of activities. At the end of the day, Israel's institutions that are democratic, that are elected, fix the problem, maybe by a decision to withdraw or half withdraw at the time. What we see right now is a little bit different. It's still Israeli democracy, vigorous and strong operating. But what is probably destabilizing or could destabilize is the fact that this time members of the armed forces, of course, mobilized by political parties or by political movements, are threatening not to serve. That is something new that we have not seen uh, prior. Harley, this, uh, uh, when I read about this issue, it sounds like it's, there's no going back at this point. Well, what this is really about is a huge divide between uh, people think it's really left and right. It's not really. It's about the winner wants to take all. Bibi Netanyahu and his coalition won. And they even say it, that we won and we want to pass the laws that we want. The other side feels that, well, you can't have a tyr tyranny of the majority either. You need to protect minorities. And, and when you really boil it down, here's how the both sides see it. The opposition feels that one, Bibi Netanyahu never talked about it when he ran when he ran in the last election, never brought it up. So they feel that he blindsided the Israeli people. Second, they're against this because they feel it's a complete conflict of interest. He's been indicted. He's afraid of going to jail and he wants to control the judiciary. So they feel that that's outrageous unto itself, and, and that's the second concern. And then lastly, they feel the majority of Israelis are against it, because if you undermine the judiciary, you undermine democracy. It's the only checks and balances, because they don't have a constitution like the United States. But the people who support it say that the Supreme Court doesn't allow the government to do anything. They're always saying no. They're elected partly by people on the bar and by lawyers who are not elected. And it's the last vestige of the left in Israel. The left is basically dead in Israel. They, they have only four seats out of 120. Mm. So that's where the conflict really is between both sides. Well, I want to zero in on the White House response for a second. The Biden administration says that Netanyahu rushed into this and didn't listen to the will of the people. In a statement, the White House Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre said, as a lifelong friend of Israel, President Biden has publicly and privately expressed his views that major changes in a democracy uh, must be enduring and must have broad consensus. It's unfortunate that the vote today took place with the slimmest possible majority. Thing, your reaction? Well, Kilman, I see this slightly differently. I mean, to me, it's ironic for us to even weigh in on it because we have our own culture wars. And this very much is a culture war in Israel. Sure. Uh, you're, doc you're talking about the government, coalition government is made up of ultra-nationalist, religious right people who it's very much like the red states here in the United States. And the judiciary is made up of descendants of the European intellectuals that uh, settled Israel and were the original pioneers of Israel. And they see themselves as the cultural elite. So some of it has a lot to do with that kind of resentment 
between both of the sides. And it is a democratic institution. The, the truth is they're very polarized in, in Israel, just like here. And so you have very slim majorities. So it's not surprising to say you can't have a broad consensus. Israel can't provide a broad consensus on anything, just like we can't here because there's such polarization. So the real question is, does the Supreme Court, should it have this kind of power where it can unilaterally, again, they don't have a constitution. All they get to say is, we don't think this is reasonable. They use the word reasonable. If they say it's not reasonable, they can undo any policy that's been voted on by the people through the Knesset. There is reason for an overhaul, for some reform. The question is, what does it look like? By the way, one last thing, Israel also doesn't have a constitution. There's a lot of things it needs to do that, and it's probably never had I the wish time. we had more time, because uh, Harley, I'd love to ask you if you find any parallels, as I do, to uh, the Turkish referendum here in terms of consolidating power. I mean, that's one, one major example that jumps out to me uh, when it comes to this decision of uh, getting the ultimate authority to do what you please. Harley Lippman, Waleed Ferris, thank you so much. And of course, Dane Rosenbaum will be sticking around.